Welcome back, darlings. Uh, this week's video, I'm going to wash the car with ONR for the very first time, and I thought, why not bring you along for the ride so you can get my thoughts and stuff. So it's going to be a bit more like vlog style, I guess. Um, hopefully, it won't be the hour it's going to take me to do this job. I'm sure I'll edit it down a little bit, but my live musings as I'm going through doing stuff. But you can see there's a bit of snow foam on half the car. So let me explain to you what I'm going to do, what I'm doing to kind of assess it for my own needs. Uh, half the car is going to be foamed. So half the car is going to have what I would call a traditional pre-wash. Remember, ONR is rinseless. Doesn't mean it's waterless. It can be used that way. Doesn't mean it has to be. Um, and I'm not going to use it that way uh, for this side of things anyway. So the front half of the car, so driver's door, front wing, and bonnet, half of the bonnet, is going to be um, washed in the traditional way. So I'm using, um, this is garage therapy uh, snow at 3% PIR, and then I'm going to just use Built Hammer Auto Wash at 5 mil to 10 litres of water to do the contact wash. The back half, I'm going to use ONR. Um, on a plush microfiber, and that's at the standard 256 to 1. And then, um, but that'll be because I'll have the pre-wash rinsed off afterwards, and we'll see, see what that does. Then over this side, I'm going to do the pre-soak with ONR, 256 to 1, on the front half, and then the back half, or maybe the other way around, not too sure yet, <laughs> the back half's a bit more dirtier. Um, Which other half I don't do that on, I'm going to do uh, just straight up, um, put a bit of O&R on and then go straight into um, wiping it off and we shall see front wheels I've done the way I'd normally do it so pre-soaking Surfex HD at 10 to 1 blast that off give them a quick wash and a chem cleanse nice plain of course why not um, and then just, but I just use the easy brush and the Viking soft brush the wheels on this side I'm going to use O&R See if it makes a difference. I don't know. See, see what impact it has. I have no idea. This is all um, new to me for the first time. So let's see. Anyway, enough waffling. What I'm going to do is I get set up for the contact wash, which means I'm just going to pressure wash all this bit off and, um, and and wash the front half. You don't need to wash that. That you need to watch that. It's just someone washing the car normally. So I'll get through that real quick, and then we'll come back to the ONR stage. All right, did you see the uh, deliberate error? I accidentally washed the whole length of the roof. <laughs> Force a <of> habit. <laughs> anyway, um, now it's onto the ONR at the back. So, in here, I've got well, about 12 litres now because there's about three in the pump spray. Um, I've got one very plush, 750 GSM towel. I'm just squeezing it out so that it's just dripping. If you've read anything up about ONR, you'd have seen that kind of metric a lot, really. Um, I should get about 16 sides, I reckon, out of this cloth. So that's a good start. So let's have a look. The kind of technique is to roll the duration you're getting to get on there. Cool. And go back this way. This is another side. There we go. Um, so more about the car um, when it was last cleaned, etc. It was cleaned uh, probably about three weeks ago, and it has currently got uh, Kosh Kemi Protector Wax sitting on top of it. So that's working out all right. Oh, lifted a bit early on that one, I think. Let's go again on the glass. There we go. Lessons learned. <laughs> Okay, so I've done both sides of that. Open it, flip around. Yeah, you could do bigger pieces, perhaps. Maybe that's better if I do that. Not too sure. I'll keep going the way I've been going anyway. And then just, there we go. There is something inherently alien feeling about this, but just because I don't do it, maybe I should go panel by panel. Maybe that's the better. That feels like a more natural kind of like swipe length. Over a bit. 
So yeah, partly why I wanted to do this was I was thinking there's got to be there's got to be a better way. There has got to be a different way to do this, like to do maintenance washes. And I know ONR exists, and I know it support, support purportedly very good. A little bit there. And I've never used it, but I kind of think, you know, if, if you could nip out with this real quick and do, do your wash, um, then you're on to an absolute winner, aren't you? Like you can do the wash the whole car in like 45 minutes, I think, if you do it like this, apparently. And that to me seems like a really sensible thing. Um, in terms of how this feels, fine. It doesn't, it feels really well lubricated. You know, it, uh, I, know, I, know they, I know they say it. But it genuinely does. I'm uh, I'm quite amazed, and of course now I technically don't need to go and dry this panel. Oh, well, no, sorry, I can. Sorry, it's not true. There's definitely some dirt coming off on it now. Um, I technically uh, don't need to rinse this panel after I'm done with it. Okay, so now I'm going to dunk this back into the thing, into the bucket. Rinse it around a bit. It's got a grit guard at the bottom. And ONR apparently drops the uh, the the dirt to the bottom. I'm gonna let that soak a bit. Now, uh, did I contact wash the back? I don't think I did contact wash the back. <laughs> this is throwing me out completely. This thing, like, genuinely, because it, it's so different, and because I'm doing like bits piece by piece. It's, it's thrown me off in, entirely. Um, so I'm just going to do, do, do half with the contact wash on the back here that was pre-washed. And then I'm going to do half with the pre-soak. I'll bring you around for that in a second with the pre-soak from the um, from the ONR. So I'll apply that in a minute before I rinse this off. This side off anyway. Um, I've already had a changing plan as well. You know, um, what I was talking about, how I was going to dice the car up. I'm going to do the rear half of this, um, pre-wash, but then rinsed. And um, I want to, just to see the O&R pre-wash, though, sorry. And then rinse the O&R off before spraying a bit more on, just to see if that makes any difference. I've got no idea. I've got absolutely no idea. But that's the whole, whole point of the video, just to kind of experiment and try and see what we get up to. So let me just go and grab my uh, pump sprayer. Yep, so Marilex Industry 3000. Again, that's got the same, this is exactly the same solution that's in the wash bucket. In fact, it's filled from the wash bucket. Okay, so that is, uh, you know, it's easier. You just got one bucket to fill up. I'm just spraying it liberally all over the back here. Links to this and everything else and below, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Anyway, right. That's no fact. In fact, I might as well apply the whole soak at the moment, right? Why? Why wait? So um, we only could rinse off half of it, but the other stuff might as well sit on there and lift stuff off. So I apply this. In fact. Let me come and bring you around so you can see what's going on. Um, I have on the rear quarter, on the roof, on the rear quarter. So yeah, this is just O&R, 256 to one. And then just spray it on letting it soak because apparently it helps encapsulate the dirt. So this back half, I'm gonna spray off. And then the front half, I'm not, I'm just gonna just put the O&R on top of it, on, in the cloth and wipe, just do the wipe. So that's kind of how they, demonstrate it being used. It's just starting to rain as well, which will make life nice and easy. Um, I'm probably going to use the O&R at um, 16 to 1 as a drying aid as well. So you kind of spray that on to the uh, body and onto the drying towel a little bit. And it seems to be more as a lubricating aid rather than actually like dispersing the water from what I can tell. I say this 
the Marinex 3000 is brilliant. Like, done half the car on like one one charge, which is where you pump it all up. I love this thing. It's just starting to get towards the end of what it can hold on to. Yeah, there's, got, there's a there's a decent amount of detritus on here. So this is gonna be a um a strong test, I think. I don't doubt the thing is I don't doubt it will come off because you're wiping something across it, right? It's just like is it coming off with um damaging the paint or not? <laughs> I honestly don't know. Anyway. See so yeah, the stuff that's drying out on the other side, and there's not really any water spots in it, that's for sure. Anyway, cloth back here. Uh, sorry, I'm going to do the top here. It's quite a lot. You made the boot. There's often, often a lot of bit stubborn bits there. Yeah, this is dirty. I mean, look, sorry. That's what a pass is bringing off. So you can kind of get an idea of how dirty the uh, uh, car is. Now, obviously, so obviously, I might be in focus now. Um, this is at the back of the car. Dirtiest part of the vehicle, right? So, and I've got notionally four clean sides left if two if i'm doing big ones i'm gonna go for smaller bits here so the cloth's a bit more manageable uh, talking of the cloth yeah i said earlier um it's a 370 gsm no it's not that's a lie it's a 750 gsm cloth that is from detailers united link to that below and if you wonder why i'm always saying oh they've got this detailers united cloth it legitimately is because they sent me stuff to try and they genuinely are very good every time. I wouldn't recommend anything that is, is crap because it's not really good for my reputation, is it? If I recommend something just for the sake of sales, then you buy it and you're like, this is rubbish, it's done my car in. It's like, yeah, that is, that would be rubbish, isn't it? That would be absolutely diabolical. So yeah, I'm now rinsing out the cloth, as you can see, trying to get as much of that muck out. I can see why people would multi-cloth. I can totally see why you multi cloth because I'm swirling this around. Yeah, the grit buckets, grit guards are holding stuff down. Maybe the dirt locker would be a bit better. But there's definitely still dirt on this cloth. There's no two ways about it. There's dirt on this cloth. So I think the UBS, the ultimate black sponge, right? you're supposed to release it a bit better. So maybe, maybe that is the case. Maybe that would be better. Um, I'm not sure. Obviously, I can't speak from experience. That could be the next, the next thing to experiment with. Anyway, right, I'm going to rinse this off now. Under, not under pressure because I haven't turned the pressure washer on. <laughs> Here we go. Let's go. So this here, hope you can hear me, all right? The bit that I'm rinsing off at the moment is the bit that has had ONR as the pre-soak and nothing else so no pre-wash no built hammer auto foam no garage therapy snow nothing like that no surfactants no active surfactants i'm just pre-washing off here and it's just the um just the onr you know it's funny about onr people always say i might say this after i turn off the pressure washer <laughs> maybe better um, it's funny about O&R. People always say, oh, it's really, really good value. Is it? 256 to 1. Sounds fantastic, doesn't it? And if you're buying a gallon, which a US gallon, that is not a UK gallon. It's, um, that is 3.7 litres, not the 4.5 that the UK gallon is. Anyway, that's about £47. Pounds. Okay. So I'm just finding a bit more for the extra lubrication. Now, I've watched a load of videos from like Ivan Lecoy, Le Lecroy, Lecroy, <laughs> Lecroy, I think he is, and he pronounces it himself. So let's go with his own introduction, shall we? Um, and he always like reapplies more just to add the lubrication. Yeah, so um, think of it like that. Um, I've lost my train of thought. Oh, value for money. Yeah, 256 to one. Sounds amazing. And at £47 for a gallon of it, again, it's, like it's pretty good value. It's about 0.1, yeah, 0.12p a litre or something like that, a mil or something like that, whatever it is. 
I'll get to the actual figure slide. I actually worked out that'd be a bit more. <laughs> Oops, not paying attention. It's what sides. A bit more useful. I've got this more sodden this time, by the way, and it seems to be a bit better. So maybe I overly squeezed it out before. Um, yeah, where was I? <laughs> uh, dear, might be the last time I do a uh, yeah, vlog style on it. Uh, yeah, right. So um, it sounds pretty good at um, 100. And, sorry, 256 to one. Yes, very good. Made that point. Built Hamber Auto Wash is one to two thousand. Or two thousand to one. And that costs um let's see, about twenty-seven pounds for a litre currently. And you put five mil into ten litres in the wash bucket. O and R, you put in you put in four mil a litre. So in a 10 litre wash bucket, you've got 40 mil. And it, I worked it out, basically, it's about 12p um, to do a, a, a wash with built hamber uh, auto wash. And it is about 50p a wash with O&R. The flip side, of course, would be that um, with O&R, you don't need to do the pre-wash technically, so you don't have to have the snow foam. You don't have to have the pressure washer, so you can use O&R more easily, especially on the go. I think, I think that's an interesting uh, area to explore and exploit. Perhaps great for when you're out and about. It's just I like summer dust. I reckon the O&R is fantastic. I wouldn't use it on a full-on winter wash, but they're not saying you should either. <laughs> um, what you're seeing here, though, it did work very well as a pre-wash. Clearly, this is summer dust, not winter dust. And they never say, they never say in their marketing that you shouldn't um, pre-wash the vehicle. Right? They never say that. It's kind of a bit of a... They don't, they don't really know where it's come from either, but they, they never said that you shouldn't pre-wash. So I think that's a, an interesting point, personally. You, know, you still can. It just means you don't have to rinse it off afterwards. And I find that interesting. Personally, that's where I think the time saving will be. I've got some bugs on here, and then they're coming off. But it's the pressure. It do, it doesn't feel like it's bad to rub it though. It does feel very slick. So yeah, by the way, I've moved on, haven't I? I've moved on now. This is the bit that has had no pre rinse. It had the soak, but it's had no pressure wash rinse. So how's this one getting? I've got a bit of bird poo here. I think I might try and blast a bit of that off. With uh, the O&R, because this is something you can do. Definitely add a lot more lubricity to the area by applying more of the product. Not a problem. No one says you can't do that. In fact, they actually encourage it. This is probably the way to use the system. Uh, of course, there's plenty of other... Um, oh. No, of course, it's right. That had a bit on it, didn't it? Nice using a light cloth, actually, so you can see kind of, kind of the colour change. Um, so that's a, an interesting tidbit. I see people doing it with dark cloth, and I always thought this about the uh, ultra black sponge. It's like, yeah, but you can't really actually see how bloody dirty it is. You can't do it in this. Now, what I'm starting to feel is that I would need to do a second pass on some of these bits down here because it's not lifted it off as well. Well, it has, but it just it needs a bit more effort, a bit more pressure, perhaps. Uh, but that doesn't feel right, does it? <laughs> Got quite a bit of bonded contamination down there now, actually. Um, so that's good. Cloth is definitely looking dirtier. Um, I can see where the sponge would benefit here because it it encapsulates the, the dirt, lifts it off, but then apparently releases it. I can see that. I can see that being useful anyway. Let's take this off here. Then. There's a lot of yeah, missing the trick here, and I'm supposed to 
spray more ONR on to lubricate it. So yeah, this other thing, sorry. Um, I said the other one I made like 10 litres up. Uh, but I didn't actually, I made 15 litres up. So that's 60 mil of the ONR product. Why did I make up um, 15 litres? Because I needed to put three into the, the Marilex pump sprayer. And I have to say, you're going to need a pump sprayer of about that size, I reckon, here. Because if you're going with something smaller, you're just not going to get the coverage at all. That's just, it's not... I've used, I've used basically all of that on um, on just like one half of the vehicle. I've not got to the wheels yet either, and I'm going to try and do them with it. So, yeah, that's an interesting aside as well. Yeah, like bug guts and stuff. I I, I can see. Again, it's not saying it's um, you don't pre-wash, and I can see if you did this, if you put on some um, some bug remover, yeah, but something to soften up the bugs. If it was in the summer. They're not saying it's perfect for all the different mediums. And and again, I stress this again. I know I'm going over it again. And again, you can pre-wash. There's nothing stopping you pre-washing this, but you shouldn't forget it. I think this is. It feels like a very safe. Oh yeah, washing this back bit here that was just ONR and then ONR pressure washed off and then and then ONR washed on the cloth. That's come up really nicely. As good. So I think so far that would be that would be my preferred way of using it. I'm gonna bring you around the front to see the struggle with the bug guts because they're not really shifting. Alright, so <laughs> it's not too sure how you can see. I've got bug guts here and I'm having to rub them with the cloth. It's well lubricated. Yes, it is. It definitely is. And it, they're coming off. Am I doing much damage? It honestly doesn't feel like it because it does feel like a bit of pressure with a very soft cloth and they're coming off. Yeah. But I think the, the ultimate thing there actually would be using uh, a, using the pressure washer. But pressure washer doesn't always get them off. I think using something to soften up the bug guts would be a very sensible approach. Very. And if, if you did that, I think you'd be laughing, actually. I think you'd be into a good, a good situation. I definitely feel like this has got some legs on it, like this approach. I feel like probably pressure washing it first would help. Okay, let's have a quick look at the state of this bucket. That was quite a nice vibrant blue to start with, can you remember? Now it's a bit murky green. <laughs> Get you on the side a little bit. Now some of that might have to do with the colour of the cloth losing some dye. So, but it clearly is. It's, it's some dirt in there too. I can see it on the surface here, like some bugs, actual bugs, not bug guts, actual bugs. <laughs> they don't. They're, they're floating, so they're not going out. It's a mayfly actually. I think. That's a caught cool one in there somewhere. Anyway, this now doesn't feel as clean or as safe as it was. However. Multiple mitts, not done putting them back in, definitely would mitigate that. Or multiple cloths, possibly just the ultimate black sponge. Who knows? And, and Matt, do you want the other thing? Practice. <laughs> Perfecting it, using it more, working out how to leverage it. Still drying. Um, this is the side that was oen hard and then rinsed with the pressure washer. This bit here come up really well. I think it, it shifted a lot more than I thought. I don't know how this would do with winter grime. That'd be a good test to do, wouldn't it? Come winter. It's not really designed for it, but it could still work. I say designed for it. It's not like it's designed for a summer wash either. It's designed as a rinse this wash for any time of the year. Use it as you please. Uh, if you've got lots of heavy soiling on it, Go with a go with a, a decent pre-wash. Right? Fair enough. Can't say much fairer than that, can you? It just certainly cleaned that up well enough, I have to say. There's that pre-wash. Um, oh. This is different to some drying aids. You know, some drying aids um, displace the water. This doesn't seem to do anything like that. Um, nor does it purport to. I think it really is just a case of 
lubricating the towel and making it safer to dry. This is something that Ivan um, constantly mentions. Like, oh, I didn't really get it. But I think, I think it's one of those things you have to practice it to kind of appreciate it. And having practiced it now, I do appreciate it. Plenty more of this on here, because this side's dried out a lot more. Right, what I'm gonna do, pause us here, because this doesn't feel very interesting to be doing, let alone watching. I'll come back when we come to the wheels. All right, see you in a minute. Grab your wheels. This is the rear, um, mainly because I can't really get the camera in particularly close to the front. But I'm gonna do the same thing on both of them, let's see what happens. The pre wash soak, I'm gonna see what this comes out like with no chemical. This is lit, what's a chemical? Like no surfactant chemical. This is literally gonna be a soak with ONR. I don't necessarily know how well this is gonna go. I'm gonna do the same on the front. Then I'm just gonna use the bucket, the the, the wash bucket, and put these the the um the two um brushes that I use. Alright then, here we go. Last step. And normally I do wheels first, but I kind of feel like um depending, well, depending how I'm gonna use this. This may be the right way to it. These now are now, these things have just come from the bucket, wash bucket of ONR, by the way. So this has probably had, I don't know, 15 minutes well. No, 10, 10 minutes well, 10 minutes well. So I'm just gonna go about brushing these as I would normally. Rinse out the thing every now and then. Get a bit more product on it. Not really from its cleaning power. Um, but it's more from the lubrication point of view. And let's be honest, I'm not really expecting this to be incredible. I'm still going to have to pressure wash, rinse it. Well, actually, I'm going to use the pressure wash. I might just use it on its um, detergent rinsing nozzle, the black one, which is super fine, just to kind of see how clean you could get these if you were just using like a garden hose and an O&R &R and a couple of brushes. I am under no illusions that these are going to be absolutely immaculate. But if you're cleaning every week, and it could be enough to do this and then do like your fallout removing based wheel cleaner once a month, could be sufficient. So I'm just dunking this the thing back in there. It feels really slick. I have to say this feels slicker than nearly every other wheel cleaner I've used like genuine wheel cleaner, apart from Garage Therapy's um, Iron Oxide. That is super slippy. Actually, like that. now I've kind of finding out I've used Decon as well. They had some lubricants into their shampoos, boys. They are good. Seriously good. Good. No wonder people are raving about them. I'm starting to find it out for myself. A bit late to the party on that one. There you go. So, there you go. Quick wheel clean for... Um, these aren't sealed with anything other than the Koch Chemi, you know, that I talked about on the body work before. So there's no, there's no signet on them. There's no nasty chemical there being used, which is also, I think, uh, critical to me, at the very least, it is. Did I just flat out not clean the door? You can't see, it's not in shot. I think I've just missed one of the doors entirely when I was um, rinsing it off, uh, drying a car, so I'll go back and do that in a second. Drying with it as a drying aid has been absolutely fine, by the way. So quick, here we go. This is just, you see, the detergent uh, rinsing and dispensing nozzle on here, this white one, uh, this sorry, black one. There's no pressure behind it, just volume. That's, nice, um, I've got to say, that's come up pretty well. I'd be happy with that. I am happy with that. I'm not looking at this going, oh, I need to get some cleaner on that. Yeah, it could be a bit better because it hasn't had any strong chemicals. No. Now, I'm going to go and do the front one. I can't really get the camera in close enough to see this because where my motorbike's parked. I was going to go and do that, and we'll, um, but you won't notice it and you'll just see some conclusions in a minute. All right, I lied. I can get the camera in there. 
<laughs> I didn't realise. But I can. It's tight, but I can get you in there. So let's have a look. And the reason I wanted to try and do this is the front wheels are clearly always worse. Makes the approach up a little bit here now. Kind of dunking it every time. Every time I do uh, but the gap between a smoke. Set out. See what we get to now. It's quite nice and not too worried about the fling coming off it for once as well, because it's it's not got a nasty chemical in there. Just something that encapsulates all the dirt. Yeah, that's working reasonably well, I think. Okay. That's the barrel's done after a fashion. Well enough for this video, anyway. Faces. This Vicam brush is incredible, by the way. There's a link to that below, too. I've not found anything better than this for this job. Yeah, I feel like I could do the bit of a dunk again. Right, well, I guess we need some sort of summary, don't we? Stay that. <laughs> These wheels, I guess. Um, yes. Yes to O&R. Yes to O&R. Um, things I would do differently, or try differently next time, different configurations. Multi-mit, multi, mit multi um, sorry, multi-cloth, maybe the ultimate black sponge. I'm going to try multi-cloth first, because I've got lots of cloths. Try that. See if it makes a difference. Um, if that's weak, only uh, weak, weak, weak and weak, regular, regular washing, I don't think you need to do pressure wash and pre-rinse. I think that's fine. If it's just dusty summer weather, you could just spray it on, you know, pre-soak it a couple of minutes, then wipe it off. I would personally, I think I'd work a panel at a time. So maybe soak up a couple, then work on one, if I apply a bit more soak to the next one again, finish off, dry it off. Move on to the next one. That's what I'm thinking. Um, I think that would work. I think it'd be pretty effective. Well, the you don't get any runs out of the door mirrors and stuff because there's no trap water. It's an interesting bit. Um, it worked very well with a uh, snow foam pre rinse. Shocker. Um, it worked very well just as a as it being um, sprayed on and then pre rinse with the pressure washer. So if we up the ante for regular regular washing. Yeah, that could that could work. That seemed I think that's probably like the best combination actually that I found that at the rear quarter there was soaking it off and then um pressure washing it, rinsing it. So I'm like use ONR again. Absolutely. Could it be my weekly wash solution? Yes, I reckon I could get the car done in like forty five minutes, which is pretty good. Does it work alright on wheels? Well enough, surprisingly. I don't have too much about rinsing it, I'd probably just have to if you're doing it without a hose or anything, I'd just rinse it off with a hose or a watering can. That'd be okay. Um, yeah, very, really nice. Hopefully that was useful. I've now got to go and edit this and try and make it shorter than an hour. Um, I'm going to try and get it for about half an hour, so we'll see how we get on with that, because there's definitely more footage than that. Anyway, if you've got this far, it means you've got to the end. Thank you so much for watching it. I know that was a long one. I know it's a different format. Don't know if it's going to land. If it does, um, let me know. I can do more like this. Also, if you've got any hints and tips on how to use ONR and get the most out of it, let me know. And I'm going to do, then I guess, a similar thing later on. I've just got dirtier again for a bit. Do a comparison between the FemLab O&R and sorry, the, <laughs> the FemLab rinseless wash and the optimum no rinse. Anyway, thank you. I will see you in the next one.